Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Joy J. Moore. And this is the episode, the podcast episode for December 22nd, 2024. Uh, this is the fourth Sunday of Advent, uh, and we have, we're moving this week, ta-da, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. So our text is Luke, uh, the Gospel of Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 45, uh, with uh, an optional edition of 46 through 56. Uh, so obviously, uh, we're moving, uh, we're, we're, we're jumping quite a few centuries now. Uh, from Old Testament to New Testament. We were in Isaiah chapter 61 last week, which uh, was probably written, uh, uh, well, scholars think uh, likely written uh, during the return from exile or during the time uh, immediately after the exile from Jerusalem. Uh, we're skipping forward, obviously, to uh, uh, to the, the first century, uh, the early first century, um, about, uh, what, 400 plus years later, uh, and we get to this familiar passage, uh, this really beautiful passage of uh, Gabriel coming uh, to Nazareth to uh, to Mary, uh, announcing the uh, the impending birth uh, of uh, of the Christ child, uh, and then uh, the option is to include the Magnificat. Then, uh, after Mary goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who is also pregnant. Uh, and and Mary sings this beautiful song of the Magnificat. Um, if you if you have time or inclination, uh, I would encourage you to include the Magnificat because it, of course, uh, is uh, it, well. First of all, just a beautiful poem, a beautiful this song, beautiful. Uh, uh, deeply profound vision of uh, of how God works in the world, and it's also uh, modeled after the song of Hannah which we looked at uh, way back in October uh, after Hannah uh, uh, has uh, uh, Samuel, her son, after she's waited for such a long time for the birth of a child, and she sings a song that then Mary uh, echoes in the Magnificat. So uh, this uh, is, again, familiar, familiar text, beloved text, uh, and, they, uh, uh, and, the, and the text fulfills those promises that we've been hearing, those unfolding promises of God uh, throughout the last, uh, you know, several months, including the promise to David that uh, that David's house, David's dynasty will be set up forever, that, that David, that there will be a son of David ruling on David's throne forever. So uh, uh, we see that in the, uh, in the Annexiation in, in verse 32, uh, Gabriel says, uh, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. So uh, lots of ways you could go with this text. Uh, you're looking forward, obviously, to Christmas in just a, a couple of days. Uh, what, what, would, uh, what jumps out to you guys? What would you emphasize in a, in a sermon here? Well, following that um, uh, kind of looking back and how this kind of uh, parallels with uh, texts we've already read and events we've already rehearsed, um, as I was looking at it this time, uh, one of the things that stood out for me is um, a parallel to um, uh, the sixth chapter of Isaiah, uh, in which uh, mm -hmm. the prophet says, you know, woe is me. And then that becomes in response to God, here am I. And in this text, Mary is saying, how can this be? You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm just a virgin. I'm just a young girl. How can this be? And in response to the angel's words to her, she completely complies and says, here am I. And, um, uh, I, you know, before I've often liked to see those parallels of the story where um, we sometimes act as if the presence of God only comes to men. And the truth is, if we're reading it through and through, we will see the exact same encounter of God speaking to women. And in this particular text, to two women. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, that was. I was actually going to just point out a few weeks ago we had Joel that uh, you know in that day the spirit uh, will fall in such a way that men and women prophesy, male and female, young yes. and old. And so what? And the note I, I learned years ago from doing sermon brainwave for so many years that. What you see is, remember Luke, Luke, obviously you both know, Luke Acts are volumes one and two, and we often think that the Spirit doesn't come until Acts chapter two, but here in Luke one, the Spirit's everywhere. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Then it says, uh, the Holy Spirit um, filled Elizabeth, and so what does she do? She prophesies. I think yes. I think you can uh, then, it doesn't say this, but the implication also is that Mary is prophesying here in the yes. power of the Spirit. The- uh, you see it happening shortly afterwards then with um, Zechariah, the, right? The Spirit falls on him in such a way that he can't talk. That's pretty funny, right? Uh, and, yeah, then, right. and then he can. And so when he, uh, it says that the Holy Spirit filled him and he spoke. And it actually says a prophecy, and then I think it extends. But so all throughout the early part of Luke, uh, the Holy Spirit is falling on everybody and they're prophesying. And I I really think that helped me, first of all, reimagine that it's not like the Holy Spirit doesn't arrive until Acts 2. That's just the day of really the Spirit's coming on the church, Kind of. I mean, it's already, the church is already there too, but you get the point. And so I really yeah, appreciate I that. I also do think, like, as you've mentioned, um, uh, Catherine, is just to notice um, in, in, in the Magnificat that we have is that we're having the promises made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants, are fulfilled. I think that's just mm. really significant. Mm. Uh, yes. A theme yeah. throughout the fall has been the promises of God uh, mm-hmm. and the, a promising beginning, the promises of God, then the promises through the prophets. And now we see the prophecies, uh, the promises of God are fulfilled in Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's hugely important. I think uh, I want, I want to say something about the, the annunciation here. Uh, we connected um, Mary with, uh, with Hannah uh, and, uh, with Isaiah, I never, I never noticed that joy. I like that. Here am I, right? Hineni in Hebrew. Here am mm-hmm. I. Uh, what, mm-hmm. what Isaiah says now, Mary says as well. Actually, what a lot of prophets say. Here am I, right? Here yeah, I am. Right. Send me. Uh, I, I want to know. Moses note says that, that um, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, eventually, you know, he tries to wiggle. Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's what you say when you answer uh, the phone. Uh-huh. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the phone. Yeah. When the phone rings, you go, Hanani. So, yeah, so Abraham says it when God says, you know, sacrifice Isaac. Yeah. and But then he says it to yeah, Isaac. Uh, anyway, go ahead, Catherine. You're, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah well, your point. I, just, I just wanted to connect <laughs> We agree this, with you. Uh, I, I wanted to. All right. I want to connect this to one other story, uh, at least one other story, uh, of Sarah and Abraham in, in, uh, in Genesis 18, right, where the three angels or the Lord comes to announce Isaac's impending birth. And uh, uh, and Sarah laughs, right? And, uh, and then denies laughing. Uh, and the angel says, or the Lord says, is anything too wonderful for the Lord, right? Uh, a, a barren woman past the age of childbearing, a menopausal woman having a baby, is ridiculous, right? Uh, but is anything too wonderful for the Lord? And then the angel Gabriel answers that rhetorical question uh, here by saying, "For nothing will be impossible with God," right? And, and the miracle is this: is the same, really. It's it's an old woman who shouldn't old be able woman. to have a bo- baby, and now a, a virgin, a, a young woman yeah. uh, who shouldn't be able to have a baby, right? Uh, yes. And of course, Elizabeth is barren too, and she has a child. So there's all of these kind of uh, miraculous and unexpected, uh, and even you know uh, humorous or or 
comedic, but in the in the classical sense of comedic, right? Something so right. wonderful that you can't believe it, uh, that you yeah. you laugh because it's so wonderful that you can't believe it. Uh, I just I we've been talking about how this story connects with with uh with the old testament and that's certainly one of those themes as well that god acts in unexpected ways in unexpectedly wonderful ways uh uh, uh to bring about god's uh purposes and then i just want to say one other thing and our, our commentator leah shade says this as well the emphasis on mary and uh, on her role in this uh some some feminist scholars have uh, don't like this story, right? They they talk about God or Mary kind of being coerced. Uh, I don't think that's true. I think I that know. that the whole heavenly realm waits with bated breath for this young woman uh, to say, "Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word." I don't think she's coerced. I think she uh, in her in her you know, in in her faithfulness, uh, uh, trust in God's promises, and uh, like Isaiah and like other prophets before her, is willing to say, "Here am I. Let it be with me." You know, "Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Uh, let it be with me according to your word." I love to tell the story as a production of Luther Seminary's Working Preacher. The narrative lectionary was developed at Luther Seminary and has been hosted on Working Preacher since 2011. Find episodes and links at workingpreacher.org slash narrative. And be sure to rate, subscribe, and comment on YouTube. Thanks for joining us.